Scene Script Have you ever pondered about our ancient relatives, the Neanderthals? Just who were these intriguing beings that walked the earth long before us? The Neanderthals, or Homo neanderthalensis, were a robust and physically adapted species. Their stocky build, short limbs, and distinctive brow ridge set them apart. They called the Pleistocene epoch their era, around 400,000 to 40,000 years ago. Their homes spanned across Europe and parts of Asia, adapting to various environments from Ice Age tundra to more temperate regions. Intriguingly, they exhibited complex behaviors. Tool use, burial practices, and possible symbolic art were all part of their culture. Genetic studies even hint at a shared common ancestor with us, Homo sapiens. Yet despite their sophistication and adaptability, they vanished around 40,000 years ago. This video delves into the enigmatic world of the Neanderthals, exploring their physical characteristics, geographical range, cultural aspects, genetic relationship with Homo sapiens, and the mystery of their extinction. Let's embark on a captivating journey back in time to uncover the secrets of the Neanderthals. Imagine a being, robust and sturdy, designed to withstand the harshest of climates, that's our Neanderthal, a species that thrived during a time when the Ice Age made survival a constant battle. Their unique physical characteristics were not just distinct, they were purposeful, fashioned by the unforgiving hand of evolution to endure the chilliest conditions. Neanderthals were a robust species, displaying a stocky build that was well suited to their Ice Age environment. This compact design helped to retain body heat, a valuable characteristic when living in the frosty landscapes of Europe and parts of Asia. Their short limbs further contributed to this heat conservation, a design feature we see echoed in many cold adapted animals today, but perhaps the most distinctive feature of Neanderthals was their pronounced brow ridge, a heavy arch of bone sitting over the eyes. This feature, paired with their relatively small eyes, gave them a look that was strikingly different from us, Homo sapiens. While the function of this brow ridge is a subject of ongoing debate among scientists, some suggest it might have been a structural adaptation for their powerful jaw muscles. And then there was their nose, large and broad. This wasn't merely a quirk of their appearance. This feature likely played a crucial role in warming and humidifying the cold, dry air before it reached their lungs. A trait that, once again, shows how well adapted they were to their harsh environment. These physical traits were not just about survival, though. They were part of what made Neanderthals, well, Neanderthals. They painted a vivid picture of a species that was not only different from us but was also a master of its environment. A species that, despite the challenges it faced, found ways to adapt and thrive. These physical attributes painted a picture of survival, of a species designed to endure. They remind us that Neanderthals were not just another hominin, they were a testament to the power of evolution, to the relentless drive of life to adapt and survive, no matter the odds. From the icy tundras to temperate regions, the Neanderthals made their home. Now let's take a journey back in time to the Pleistocene epoch, roughly 400,000 to 40,000 years ago. This was the era when Neanderthals walked the earth and their footprints can be traced back to Europe and parts of Asia. This geographical range was vast and varied, a testament to their adaptability and resilience. Imagine a species robust enough to survive in the harsh, freezing conditions of the Ice Age tundra. The Neanderthals were precisely that, they had perfected the art of survival in these frosty landscapes, exhibiting a resilience that was nothing short of incredible. Their large noses were likely an adaptation to this cold climate, helping them to warm and humidify the frigid air before it reached their lungs. But the Neanderthals were not just a cold weather species, they also thrived in more temperate regions. This adaptability is a striking feature of their existence. From the frosty tundras to the warm temperate forests, the Neanderthals were at home. This wide-ranging adaptability suggests a level of sophistication in their survival strategies, hinting at their ability to exploit different resources and adapt their lifestyle to the changing seasons and environments. Their geographical range and adaptability to different habitats also give us insights into their migratory patterns. They were not static beings, confined to one area or climate. Instead, they moved with the seasons, following the food and resources they needed to survive. This nomadic lifestyle was a crucial aspect of their survival strategy, allowing them to adapt to changing climates and environments over the tens of thousands of years they inhabited the Earth. So, from the icy landscapes of the tundra to the more temperate regions of Europe and Asia, the Neanderthals proved themselves to be a resilient and adaptable species. 
Their geographical range and habitat preferences speak volumes about their survival skills and adaptability, painting a picture of a species that was far more sophisticated and resourceful than we often give them credit for. Their adaptability was a testament to their resilience and survival skills. Beyond mere survival, Neanderthals exhibited a rich and complex culture. The cultural life of Neanderthals is a fascinating testament to their cognitive abilities and their adaptability to the environment. It is important to remember that, like us, they were not just creatures of instinct, but beings with the capacity to learn, to innovate, and to pass on knowledge to subsequent generations. Let's start with their tool-making abilities. Neanderthals were skilled craftsmen, creating a variety of stone tools that were not only functional, but also showed a degree of sophistication. They made hand axes, scrapers and points, and even developed a technique known as the Levallois technique, which allowed them to produce a greater number of flakes from a single stone core. These tools were not just random pieces of rock, they were carefully crafted implements that required knowledge, skill, and a keen understanding of the materials at hand. In addition to tools, Neanderthals also practiced burial rituals, suggesting a belief in the afterlife or at least a recognition of death. They buried their dead with grave goods, like animal bones and stone tools, and sometimes even arranged the bodies in specific positions. This practice of intentional burial is a clear indicator of complex thought and possibly even spiritual beliefs. Symbolic art is another aspect of Neanderthal culture that points to their cognitive abilities. While the evidence is not as abundant as it is for modern humans, several sites have yielded intriguing findings. For instance, in Spain, inside the Cueva de los Aviones, shells with pigment residues were found, suggesting the Neanderthals used them either for body decoration or symbolic communication. Similarly, in Gibraltar, a rock formation was found engraved with a simple grid-like pattern, an abstract design that could be a form of symbolic representation. And what about language? While we don't have direct evidence, many researchers believe that Neanderthals likely had the capability for language. They had the same FOXP2 gene as modern humans, a gene associated with speech and language. Additionally, the complexity of their tool-making, their social interactions, and their burial practices all suggest a level of communication that likely involved some form of language. Their social structure, though still a topic of ongoing research, appears to have been relatively sophisticated. Evidence suggests that Neanderthals cared for their elderly and injured, implying a sense of community and shared responsibility. They also likely engaged in communal hunting, requiring coordination and cooperation. So, as we delve into the cultural life of Neanderthals, we begin to see them not as primitive brutes but as beings with a rich and complex culture, capable of symbolic thought, emotional depth, and social sophistication. Their culture was a testament to their cognitive abilities, painting a picture far more complex than mere brute survival. The ties that bind us to the Neanderthals are more than just historical, they are genetic. Let's delve into the fascinating world of our shared ancestry. Neanderthals, or Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens that's us, have a common ancestor. This shared progenitor lived approximately five to 700,000 years ago. As time passed, the two species diverged, each evolving unique traits and characteristics. However, these two species did not exist in isolation. There was a period when both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens coexisted, and during this time limited interbreeding occurred. You might be wondering what does this interbreeding mean for us, the modern humans? Well, it's quite intriguing. The genetic legacy of these ancient beings is carried within us. Recent genetic studies have revealed that about 1-2% to of the DNA of people of non-African descent comes from Neanderthals. This percentage might seem small, but when you consider that there are about 3 billion base pairs in the human genome, it translates to a significant amount of genetic material. This Neanderthal DNA within us is not just a dormant relic of the past. It has real, tangible effects on our biology. For instance, some of these Neanderthal genes are associated with certain traits and health conditions that are present in people today, such as skin and hair texture, susceptibility to specific diseases, and even behavioral tendencies. However, it's crucial to remember that while we share some DNA with Neanderthals, we are not direct descendants of them. Instead, both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals are like branches stemming from the same tree trunk of a common ancestor. The interbreeding that happened was more akin to these two branches intertwining for a brief period before continuing to grow separately. The genetic ties between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals provide a fascinating glimpse into our shared history. It bridges the vast expanse of time,
connecting us to the ancient world and the beings that walked the earth long before we did. These genetic echoes remind us that we are not isolated entities but part of a vast, interconnected network of life that stretches back hundreds of thousands of years. However, it also raises intriguing questions. How did the interbreeding occur? What implications did it have on the evolution of both species? And perhaps most importantly, why did Neanderthals eventually disappear while Homo sapiens thrived and became the dominant species on the planet? These are questions that scientists are still exploring today, and each new discovery adds another piece to the puzzle of our shared past. In our very DNA, we carry the echoes of these ancient beings. The Neanderthals may have disappeared from the face of the Earth around 40,000 years ago, but their legacy lives on within us, a testament to our shared history and a constant reminder of our place in the grand tapestry of life. Despite their resilience and adaptability, the Neanderthals faced extinction around 40,000 years ago. This event marked the end of a species that had braved the harsh elements of the Pleistocene epoch, a time when Earth was in the grip of relentless ice ages. But what led to the extinction of these robust beings, our closest extinct human relatives? The extinction of Neanderthals is a topic that continues to generate much debate among scientists. There is no single agreed-upon theory, but several factors are often discussed. One of these is climate change. The Neanderthals lived during a time of extreme climatic fluctuations. The Earth swung between periods of glacial cold and relative warmth. These rapid changes could have disrupted the Neanderthals' food supply, making survival increasingly difficult. Neanderthals were well adapted to the cold, with their stocky build and short limbs conserving heat. But when the ice receded during warmer periods, their physical adaptations may have become a disadvantage. The changing environment may have favored the more versatile Homo sapiens, who were better equipped to exploit a wider range of resources. This brings us to another potential factor in the Neanderthals' demise. Competition with Homo sapiens. Neanderthals and Homo sapiens coexisted in Europe for several thousand years. During this time, they may have competed for the same resources, from food to shelter. The Homo sapiens might have had an edge in this competition, thanks to their superior social and communication skills, such as the ability to form larger, more organized groups. Additionally, the arrival of Homo sapiens in Europe coincides with the period when Neanderthals began to decline. Some scientists suggest that Homo sapiens might have introduced diseases to which the Neanderthals had no immunity, similar to what happened when Europeans first arrived in the Americas. Yet it's also possible that the two species didn't compete directly at all. Instead, the Homo sapiens might have gradually replaced the Neanderthals through a process of assimilation. Genetic evidence indicates there was interbreeding between the two species, suggesting that Neanderthals didn't disappear entirely, but were absorbed into the Homo sapiens population. The truth is likely a combination of these factors, from climate change to competition and assimilation. The story of the Neanderthals' extinction is complex and multifaceted, just like the Neanderthals themselves. It's a puzzle that scientists are still trying to piece together, using archaeological evidence, genetic studies, and climate models. The extinction of Neanderthals is not just about their end, but also about the survival of our species. It's a tale of adaptability, resilience, and the struggle for existence in a changing world. Their disappearance from the Earth is a mystery that continues to intrigue scientists to this day. But the Neanderthals live on, not just in our genes, but also in our collective curiosity and quest for understanding our own past. Our journey through the world of the Neanderthals has been fascinating, hasn't it? We've traversed the Pleistocene epoch, walked alongside these robust, stocky humans, and glimpsed into a world that existed hundreds of thousands of years ago. Our understanding of Neanderthals began with their distinctive physical characteristics. These were individuals who were adapted to their environment, with short limbs and a broad frame designed for survival in the cold climates they inhabited. The pronounced brow ridge and large nose were more than just features. They were adaptations that helped the Neanderthals thrive. Beyond their physicality, we've also explored the geographic range of the Neanderthals, from the icy tundra of Europe to the more temperate regions in parts of Asia. Their adaptability was a testament to their resilience and survival skills, a quality that allowed them to endure for over 360,000 years. We've also delved into the cultural aspects of Neanderthals, a facet that revealed their complexity, they were more than just survivors, they were tool makers, they buried their dead, and there's evidence to suggest they even created symbolic art. 
This points to a social structure and a form of communication that was sophisticated for its time. And of course, our genetic connection to Neanderthals is a thread that binds us to our past. The shared common ancestor and the evidence of interbreeding between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals is a reminder of our intertwined history. Yet, despite their robustness and adaptability, the Neanderthals went extinct around 40,000 years ago. The reasons behind their disappearance remain unclear, with theories ranging from climate change to competition with Homo sapiens, or possibly a combination of factors. In understanding the Neanderthals, we not only delve into our past, but also gain insights into our present and possibly our future. The Neanderthals, in their strength and adaptability, in their culture and genetic ties to us, continue to fascinate and challenge our understanding of what it means to be human.